Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Refine Horizons, and this is another short video we're doing for CAD Management Weekly. It is December 31st, 2020. Be happy when 2020 is gone and 2021 is here, so we're looking forward to that. Hopefully 2021 treats the world a little better, we'll see. <laughs> At any rate, uh, we're going to talk about point groups a little bit. So, uh, in Carlson, uh, you can have point groups similar to Civil 3D, AutoCAD Civil 3D. They work a little bit different, but there are some, there's a lot of similarities. So, one important difference is in AutoCAD Civil 3D, your point groups live in your drawing, just like your point objects do. And in Carlson, they're going to live in the coordinate database with your points. So, when you go to create your point groups, you're actually going to create them inside the coordinate database, not inside the drawing. So, the reason that's important is uh, when I was working on my drawing template for Carlson, I wanted to put in our standard point groups that correspond to our point ranges. And I, I stumbled a little bit because you can't do that in the drawing. You actually have to do it in the in the coordinate database. So in Carlson, you actually need two templates. You need a drawing template and you need a coordinate database template. So I went ahead and made that and I set it uh, as the coordinate database for the template drawing. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the point groups that I made. So these are the point groups that we made. So we've got construction as staked, construction calc, topo for point cloud extracts, topo bathymetric, topo continuous, GPS. Uh, we got the light side and the dark side. Those are our two crews. Total station, light side and dark side, our two crews. Then we've got boundary found, boundary search. We've got control aerial, control secondary, control primary, control benchmarks. And these groups actually correspond to our standard point ranges, which I can show you guys. So give me a second here, and I'll try and dig that up. I'm trying to remember where I put those. Uh, all right, so here's our point ranges. You guys can't see them, so hang on, and I'll pull them over. So these are our standard point ranges. Okay, so. For example, 1 to 4 are primary benchmarks, then our other control is 5 to 399. Then we get into our boundary points, our topo points, right? Depending on the instrument and the crew, you've got a different number range. Okay, so I've set that up here. So if you go ahead and if you edit any of these point groups, you will see I've got it set to point list with the number range. Okay, these numbers do not have to be in the database. So let's go ahead and make a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, create, and this isn't in our point group range, but it probably should be. So I'm going to call it GIS. You're going to uncheck include all. That'll let you pull up this point list. And we're just going to enter the list here. So I'm going to do 100,000 to 199,999. That's going to be my GIS point range. Hit save. Now it's in there. And I'm going to just put it down. Uh, where I think it should go, which is probably down at the bottom. Okay. So uh, now you can also do point range, uh, point groups. You can group points by description. So let me create one of those. I don't know if we're going to do that here at my shop. I'm not sure if we're going to use that or not because we've got a pretty good layering standard, but I wanted to show you guys how to do it. So let's say you wanted a point group for all your curb gutter sidewalk shots. Okay, so you're gonna we're gonna create that based on description, not point number, right? So we're gonna uncheck include all instead of doing point list this time. We're gonna go down to description, and we're gonna say uh, you can set it by selection or, or from a list, but uh, we're gonna we're just gonna type it in here. So I want uh, top top face curb, top of roll curb, top back of curb. Lip for lip of gutter, flow line for curb flow line, and then we want back of walk for back of sidewalk, and we want SW for sidewalk, and we'll say save. Okay, so now we have now we have a curb gutter sidewalk group that we can go look at. Okay, so you can also you, know, you might want a point group for just your utilities. Like I said, I'm not sure if we're going to use that here at Refine Horizons because we've got a pretty good lay layering standard and we're going to have some good layer filters set up, but I wanted to show you guys how to do that. Okay, now if there's not a, 
you might be like, all right, that's great. Um, but now that I have a point group, what do I do with it? Well, it's a little bit different than Civil 3D and the most of the functionality of point groups doesn't reside in this dialog. Okay, so, uh, but it's other dialogs. So for example, if you go to uh, your points menu, um, any of these commands here uh, will work on a group. So for example, if I want to freeze points, I can actually pick a point group and freeze a, just a point group, right? Um, or you can erase the points that are just in a point group. Okay, and there's some other commands. Some, there's some field to finish commands and some other commands that, that will allow you to use point groups. So you're going to find the functionality for point groups is in the other menus. Um, and, and I'll probably, uh, when I get it, we're just setting up these point groups, but uh, the next tope I do, and I, I get some points in some point groups, I'll show you how those work. Um, the, the last thing I wanted to say uh, about point groups in this video is um, I just want to point out, I think it's a good pun point out, that there's a pun for you. I just want to show you, I think it's good practice when you're importing points to uh, put them in their own point group. Um, I just find as, as uh, it just comes in handy to be, to be able to isolate those points. So if you're going to import an ASCII file, uh, which I have to go find one. Uh, let's go find a job with an ASCII file real quick. Sorry, having a little bit of a brain freeze there, guys. I apologize. Um, so let's say we've got a... Uh, We've got our topo shots from December 8th, okay? So we, we're going to go ahead and import those. So we're going to say open. And then here in this dialog, what you can do is that uh, you can set a point group, okay? And choose method for the point group, select group name. And you can actually, you can actually have a point group in here that those points, all those points for that import go into. So let me, let me do this a little bit different. So we're going to come in here, a point group manager. So what I would do is I would just create a group and uh, maybe you you just have a common prefix so for example maybe it's the date uh, except I'm in the wrong spot okay. so you save that now you're gonna have this point group so when you go into your points, you're going to import your, your ASCII file. You can pick your point group, select it by name. Now those points that you import will go into that point group. And that's pretty handy. If you ever have a problem with a group of points, you got a broad height bust or some other issue, it's easy to select and delete those points or replace them. Uh, so that's just another tip. Uh, I think that's about it. That's about what I wanted to show you guys with point groups. I'm sure I will learn more about point groups as I work with Carlson. And um, I'll try and post some more tutorial videos. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.